All right, so and I am Bo Sun Elizabeth Cookie of Goddesses Media and a member of Strike First Gaming. And this is the Strike First Gaming Show. I'm followed by Cobra Kai Tone and Cobra Tron, Kitty Kaboom, and also Dr. B, Galaxy B. And thank you for watching our show. We have a wonderful topic for this um, rendition of episode three. We'll get to that shortly later. But first, we're going to start off with Cobra Cobra Tron. What do you got for us today with your VR adventures? What's happening? Well, I just got I just got back from Disney World, but what I had waiting for me was like a bunch of new little items and techy things. So I'm just gonna blast them off right quick because I'm gonna get to the main subject, which which is the Valve Index. But I got this in the mail. Keeps the sweat off of the main thing, and I'll show you how the main thing is right here. You remember the Pimax AKX. This thing is pretty much like the only way you're going to get 4K in both of your eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, I showed this off last week. This is still like the powerhouse for right now. They're at CES real big this year, showing off pretty much this right now. It's It's been out for about six months, but they're showing it off to the world at CES, which is a digital event this year. And uh, I also got from them this new product they have, which is the fiber optic cable, which also extends it to five meters. The, uh, stock cable that comes with it it's really short it's like I, ca I can't even believe they would ship it with a cable that short pretty much have to stand like five feet away from your pc or hence like you might snag it or rip it out of your pc but i got this thing another cool thing about this is it has two like input cables the old one is which is crazy too another thing about it they really want you to like put three of these things in your pc like who wants like three things sticking out? So what they did was made it more efficient and it's a it's pretty much a longer cable, like 15, 20 feet. So I'll move on to the thing that I really want to show to you guys. This is like the most amazing piece of tech. And it was like Christmas all over again when I got back from Disney World. This is the Valve Index powered by Steam. Wow, it looks kind of like Kylo Ren. <laughs> yeah, I knew you would like that B. <laughs> yeah, but this bad boy right here, I didn't need it because I got the AKX, but something in the back of my head was like, man, this thing does 144 hertz. You don't know what that feels like. You got to feel it. Uh, the AKX tops out at 75 hertz, which is still cool, but you're doubling the hertz with this thing right here. And I heard everything from like Beat Saber to all the shooters. This is kind of like giving you an edge if you're a flat screen gamer and playing like Call of Duty and you have like 140 hertz, 240 hertz monitor. So you're getting a little edge on where your mouse goes. Like, So another thing about this thing is the built-in sound. This thing is amazing when you put this thing over your head, which is really comfortable too, I might add. These uh, speakers don't actually touch your ears. I don't know how it does it, but you put this thing on, it makes you feel like you have over-the-ear headphones when it's not even touching. I think it what it does, it it kind of like changes the frequency, so it like messes with your like inner vestibular like muscles and stuff, and it just amplifies that sound with your ear, and you're getting like full stereo 3D sound. It's amazing. But other than that, uh, I want to say I'll, I really like this device. It's like really comfortable. You can see how it has like this kind of that cups the back of your skull so it stays on it's not really heavy like the uh, akx that's another thing all about and it, this thing right here you can see how kind of more chunkier it is mm -hmm. also this thing right here doesn't come with headphones as you can see it, it does it's like got this little kind of kind of the same thing where it like shoots sound from like a certain angle but the sound on these things are not really that great so I always use like earbuds or or like over the ear headphones. Uh, just another thing to add weight to it though. So that's where this thing comes in. This thing has built in some of the, probably the best built in sound on a VR headset. Huh. So it's not that expensive, like all things considered. It uses the, uh, the Knuckles controllers, what I showed you that I was using before with the Pimax, but this actually goes 
with the index. This is built for the index. And then this thing mm. can sense your fingers. And if you want to say anything, <laughs> it knows where your fingers are. That's how, that's what's crazy about these things. The speakers on that device, um, are they like surround sound or just regular stereo? This is actually 3D audio. So like if you're playing Population One, which is a shooter, like kind of like uh, Call of Duty, but more like your hang gliding and stuff. You want to be able to, to like see hear where the bullets are coming from because you're also mm -hmm. hang gliding. So you see bullets whizzing by you. You want to know where they're coming from. That's what you need the 3D audio for. So you can kind of look back down there. Oh, they're down there. So you can like shoot them. And this is this is actually like life right here. <laughs> I don't want to exaggerate. This is like 3D audio. You're you're inside the arena and you know where bullets are coming from because of these these things. So. Yeah, get one of these. How much does that retail like, for? I got this for like four hundred fifty dollars, but I was on a wow. super long waiting list. I think I I ordered these like in September, and then I wasn't expecting even to get it this year. But they uh, they said, hey, your your stuff is ready like uh right before Christmas. I think it was like December twenty third, shipped it, and I got it right when I got back from Disney World. So this is like my new Christmas present. This thing is awesome. What games are on it? That's impressive. You could play Half Life Alex. That's mm. probably the best. The best game, which is pretty much Half Life Three. Mm. You can play that fully in VR with 144 hertz. Really, uh, not as big as a FOV is the AKX, which is like this. It's a little more like this, like 130 degrees. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot better than the other VR headsets I was showing you last week, with like the Quest, which is kind of more tunnel vision because it's like a it's like a limited kind of thing, so you can't expect much. Now, how many people are on the online world of it? Like the network, are there a lot of users on, on that newer set? So yeah, so Population One is a game that everyone's playing right now. It's like the most popular. It's like a battle royal, but you're three people to a team and there's like four or five teams. So there's about mm -hmm. 20 people on the arena and you work with your two friends to try and take everyone out battle royal style in the the world shrinks and shrinks to everyone's like, bam. That's fire. Nice. Yeah, we should get on it, but me, you, me, you, and my brother. I'll be we'll down. Up a team. I'm, I'm down. down. I need to get that. Hook it sounds good. Be able to headset. <laughs> <laughs> Hook me up. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. Great. Sounds good. Well, thank you. Thank you for letting us into your latest world of VR. Moving forward, I'm gonna backtrack just a little bit for our audience because. I skipped over the news feed. Oh, I, I, I was kind of weirded out that he jumped to me so soon. I was like, whoa, where'd the news go? But it's cool. go you, can, you can always edit it back. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. So here we go. Here is our latest news feed. Let's see here. I'm going to find my right screen. News flash. <laughs> news flash. Hold on here. <laughs> Eventually, we're getting there. Peace oh, at a yeah. time. Peace oh, yeah. at a time. Hey, so, Cookie, before you get into the news, the outfit. Can we get into your outfit just real quick? I just we. I'm sure the viewers are wondering it. Is it of the royal silks? What what is going on? It's fire. What? Well, it it, it was fine until I just ripped a side of it uh, coming from a ladder. It's going to it's going to uh, change quite a bit. Like soon <laughs> gonna alter. It, it, at least it's salvageable this is a uh, um yes it is chinese um it's uh it's basically a summer silk dress right um i don't have too much pink in my collection i'm not really a pink person to be honest i haven't rocked mm. the color pink since the days of miss piggy it wasn't really my thing <laughs> <laughs> no really that's how long ago it's been um I wanted to try and do something different with the colors. I haven't worn pink in a long time. And this mm. was a new garment that I got that now needs to be mended. Um, and then I kind of mixed it with um, these carnelian beads and garnet earrings. So it's kind of, okay. it's really kind of simple. It's not really all that, you know, it's, it's your basic Chinese summer, summer chi pao, really. So, very okay. nice, Looks very pleasant. Yeah, I like kinda... the color on you. I, I really do like that shade of pink on you. I gotta no. say, it's nice. Thank you. It's it's the jacket that's keeping me warm right now, cause you know I don't want to put on the heat. The PG&E e, e bill will go up. 
It reminds me of at the end of The Last Dragon, like Bruce Leroy walks in and he's like trying to talk to Vanity. It's kind of like that, that, you know what I'm talking about? I know you know what I do. It's exactly yep. what I was thinking. Yep, exactly. You know what I mean? And Would he looks up and Vanity moves? has purple and stuff on. And then he's like, yeah, exactly. Teach me some moves. And then he's thinking, now he's the master. Like, <laughs> yeah, I remember. Well, now the dress got to get mended because I fucked up, but it's all good. It won't be destroyed. Um, so I have an interesting lineup of news for this um for this uh this episode and uh, starting with um CES. For those of you out there who don't know, CES is the Consumer Electronics Show. It happens once a year, usually in the middle of February. And then there's a CES Asia that normally happens either in Dubai, Shanghai, Seoul, Korea, Taiwan, and it shows the best of Asian technology. What's usually over there that most likely never comes over here unless you go through a Kickstarter. Now, CES is always 100% of the time in Las Vegas at the Las Vegas Convention Center. I guess they managed to find a way to run CES this year digitally or physically without anyone being there except for the presenters. That being said, Arcade One Up was there to present and they presented two of their newest machines, one of them being their Killer Instinct Classic 1 and 2 along with um, Ninja Turtles. And this is what they look like. Oh, and X-Men. Yes, X-Men 4 player. X-Men. Can't forget that. Nice. Um, let's see. And the Killer Instinct machine is here. Oh, wow. Nice. That's so along with, along with this also came Battletoads so, and Double Dragon. <sighs> oh, that's fire. That's what? fire. Yes. What? Kill, and what's Killer Instinct lineup on, on there? Can we scroll that again? Oh, yeah. So this is, I believe I can make this bigger. There we go. This is the classic part one and part two that was in the arcade. Now, this was a very hard game to bring home, and it was a 3D version for the N64, and it was never a faithful version of the game unless you got the ROM of it for MAME. And it took MAME many years, you know, to really work with people's PC systems because MAME as an emulator was very um, taxing on PC hardware. Mm-hmm. And if you didn't have the right video cards, enough RAM, enough space, your machine will run slow. Mm-hmm. And over the years, MAME became more PC friendly. And so running Killer Instinct is like that is not even an issue anymore. Mm-hmm. But I guess what Arcade One Up's biggest issue with this machine by itself was the licensing of Rare, Nintendo, Microsoft now, because the rights... There was always fights over the rights of this game after the second after the second iteration in '97. Mm-hmm. It was a long stretch, and they wouldn't come back until 2013 with the new Killer Instinct reboot. And so, that given the you know that given the situation, Microsoft once again is publishing the Killer Instinct label. And even then, it had some issues between Double Helix was the the whole starter of the new Killer Instinct wave. And then it went over to Iron Galaxy. Iron Galaxy. So, yeah, Killer Instinct has had a um, tumultuous journey. Definitely. So even now. so, But they was able to secure rights. And um, I guess Rare, Rare and Microsoft got their names on it. And I guess Nintendo is not involved. So I guess they worked something out with Nintendo without them having to get royalties. Mm-hmm. I don't know all the story with that, but you can see Rareware right there is on the side of the machine. And so Rare is still controlled by Microsoft. So, hmm. so they Big have use of that IP. <clears throat> um, in addition, we got Dragon's Layer right there. Nice. Mm-hmm. Wow. And right. um, Atari Legacy Edition cabinet that they announced. Ooh. Okay. That's going to be fire. Um, and the classic Street Fighter II Hyper Fighting cabinet. <laughs> No, what's going to be on that, I wonder? Uh, oh, this one will include 1944, Commando, Darkstalkers, mm-hmm. Final Fight, Final Fight. Ghosts, Ghosts and Goblins, and all the, the entire Street Fighter II series. And Strider. I want that cabinet. And Strider at the end. Ooh. That one's more fire than the one that came out prior. Championship edition one? Yeah, that's, that's yeah, so this is, right this there. Is better to get the, yeah, I want this one. When does this drop? So... As far as I know, pre-orders have begun. Don't quote me. I don't want to give the wrong information, but pre-orders have begun. And I believe sometime within the next three to four months, these will be available. 
I'm um, getting Hey, that. Cookie, what's on the Atari Classic one? Let's see. Let's go up here. So we're going to get Asteroids, Asteroids Deluxe, Centipede, Centipede. Major Havoc, Missile Love Command. Centipede. Played a lot of Centipede last weekend. So these are all the games right here. Nice. nice. Yeah, so I'm I'm excited. It's nice that the updated Street Fighter 2 cabinet has the entire, almost the entire 2 anthology. It doesn't have Ultra Street Fighter 2, but... That Dragon Lair is going to be really cool, too, because I just... Yeah, I just, is I would waste Dragon, Dragon Lair. I would is waste Dragon money. Is Dragon Lair just Dragon Slayer, or does it also have, like, Space Ace with space it? Space Ace. It, there, it's there. Space Ace is there. Dragon Slayer 2, Time yeah, War. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, it's the entire anthology. It's all there. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, that Dragon's Lair was expensive when uh when it was an arcade when I was a kid. I was like mm. quick fifty cents and if you didn't press the right direction at the right time, mm -hmm. your fifty cents gone. <laughs> yep. I always had to ask my sister or my cousin to play it for me so yeah. I could see it, you know, almost all the way through. And my cousins would always beat the game. So I'd just be like, play it for me so I win. Yep. Didn't mm -hmm. this game get I think I ported for the three D O for Panasonic three D O at one point. I, so. I believe I you're so. right. Yes. They did have that. They did. And because, it was exact because it's such a cartoon looking game. It was very exact. The FMV sequences is what made it over. That's what's making me remember. Mm -hmm. so. Well, cool. Moving forward, um, this would be a very bit of interesting news for people in the PC gaming world. If you are a fan of DOS games like Oregon Trail, Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? Um, math Blaster, Sticky Bear Math, um, and wow. anything and any game that ran on DOS from 95 into 98, primarily Windows 95, 95 plus, 98, 98 plus, and also um, Windows Millennium, which had limited DOS capabilities, mm -hmm. then there is this new, um, this is a, a, a mecha, mechanism is the wrong word, RetroArch has updated its emulation cores for you to download something called DOSBox Pure. Mm. It will allow you to play your old DOS games through RetroArch without having to go through um, a, vir a virtual station, which means you have to use a virtual emulator to run Windows 98 within Windows 10 or Windows 95 within Windows 10 and try to run your DOS games through an emulator through Windows, a Windows emulator mm. to reinstall DOS. Mm. That's what this allows this emulator to do. In fact, on the stuff that I set up with our computers, I have RetroArch running some of the Super Nintendo, Nintendo, multiple games because it automatically maps your controls for you when you plug it in. Um, this is nice to know because there are a couple of DOS games that I am interested in. I'm wondering, and in the future, will RetroArch start working on PC games that specifically ran on Windows 95 and 98? Or will they work with those settings to allow you to reinstall those older games that were made for those older infrastructures? Nice. So this, this article right here, which you can find on www.arstechnica.com is specifically going into the downloading of the core if you have RetroArch on your computer. So you have to have the emulator and then go into the cores, download the DOSBox Pure Core, and then go through all the instructions on how to run your DOS game from whatever era it was from if you still have those files. So, um, Good, you know, good stuff, RetroArch. They're always improving oh, their emulators. That's really cool. Moving forward. Oh, oh yes. Days? Three more days? Two more days? Yes, more days. and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the exact and correct time of what we need to do. So, if you're interested in the latest, newest handheld by GPD of Hong Kong and of Shenzhen, GPD is now releasing their GPD Win 3 up for pre-orders with the new i7 processor with integrated graphics that is now allowing us to play our AAA games or AAA PC games at medium to high resolution settings. So their previous creation, which was the Win Max, was allowing you to play AAA games from medium to low settings. This new handheld device, which is not a clamshell, with a flippable screen that comes up, 
will allow you to play all of your AAA games now without a problem with medium to high settings. I sent word out to GPD earlier, not too long, this um, earlier this week about it running Mortal Kombat 11. Um, hopefully they'll get back to me, they'll show me a video that it can run MK11. If it can run MK11, I'm really all about pre-ordering it. So about the pre-order process, it begins on the 15th, Beijing time, which is technically, so China is a day ahead of us. When it is nighttime there, it's daytime here. So we need to make sure that if we're going to pre-order this device, that we need to pre-order it on the 15th, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time in California, which is 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the East Coast, which will be 10 a.m. on the 15th of China. One more time, I'll break that down. So since China, 10 a.m. in Beijing, when it's 10 a.m. over there, it'll be 6 p.m. in California mm. and 9 p.m. in New York on the East Coast. So that is how we can pre-order this and be one of the first in line to get, the, get this and be part of the, the first wave of backers to get this machine. So keep your eyes on the clock for 6 p.m. on the 15th, our time, because it'll be 10 a.m. Beijing time over there, and that's when this launches and we can buy it. Now, more information about this handheld is going to have three models. It's going to have the basic model with the i5 processor and then two different models with the i7 processor. One is going to be a limited silver and black color, and the other one is just going to be all black. So, of course, I want the limited edition version. I want the black and silver version. You know, okay. um, yes? Uh, so... How limited will this be? Is it going to be like Dr. B's Chewbacca shoes and a Mesco exclusive release where it's going to sell out in 15 minutes on the, on the limited edition? Well, like, well here's, no, here's, like where, here's where it's going to be interesting. I would say yes when it was the GPD Win 2 or the Win Max because it did. It sold within like two, two no, three uh, hours. It was done. Open up you new. know, as soon as it opened it up, people like jumped on it immediately. Now, here's what gets interesting. There are three different models. There's the basic model, which is the i5 processor, and then there are two different models with the i7. So the two models with the i7 are essentially the same. The only thing that makes it limited edition is that one, one is all black and the other one is black and silver. The mm. question is, who's fighting for what? I have a mm. feeling in my heart that most people are gonna fight for the all black version. That's what I want. You know, I want the black and silver. I don't, I don't care. I, I don't think I'll have a fight for that. And so they're probably separated by the different colors and the processor in terms of the first wave. So there'll be a first wave for the limited edition of color, the first wave for the all black color, and the first wave for the lower end model. The real question here is, when we also purchase that, you'll have the option to purchase the dock. See, I don't want the dock to run out because the dock will allow me to go and hook it up to the computer and hook it up to other infrastructures and start moving data a lot more freer and a lot more faster. Nice. nice. So that means if we get this model again, like we did with the Max, then that means of course I'll be coming over to go and move the games over to everyone's handheld, but it'd be faster if we all had the dock. Yeah. Right. I'm going hard on that. Let's go. <laughs> I'll be ready. So, one more time, the 15th, our 15th, 6 p.m., will then be the 15th, 10 a.m. in Beijing. So, I'll be, I'll be home, I'll be on my computer ready and waiting to go. So, and shout outs to the Fox who has a development model of it already and is doing gameplay videos. So, if you wanna see some gameplay of this device, go over to the Fox on YouTube, P-H-A-W-X, um, to his channel, and you can see all of his gameplay reviews so far of the GPD Win Max. This is the Indiegogo have page. He'll have the actual review out like in the next day or two. Well, remember, his is a development model, so he's going to give us the, the review of his development model. We're going to get the finished model. So. Nice. Oh, yeah. I need that dock. Yep, there's the dock right there. You know, there's the slide-up screen right there. Mm-hmm. 
Oh yeah, it's sexy. That's for sure. It's a sidekick on steroids. Oh yeah. I was just gonna say. I was just gonna say. I love that sidekick. Sidekick on steroids. Moving forward. Psychic X. <laughs> <laughs> Moving forward. Um, I've, it's not really video game related, but I thought it should be mentioned because his products were used in video games and handheld devices, MP3 players, um, and video gaming devices as well. And mm-hmm. this is Dr. Dre who, had, uh, who suffered a brain aneurysm on January 4th. Um, he's best known for his Beats by Dre um, product line after, you know, his rap career. Of course, he's well-known in hip-hop. He's well-known for his entrepreneurship, his philanthropy. He's all over the place, just like Snoop Dogg is all over the place. But his headphones at one point were the best headphones to use on your Game Boy, on your PC computer, on your laptop, on your MP3 devices. Like, he had his, it was just all around the best noise cancellation headphones ever. You know, I can't remember when it was the last time I actually listened to Dr. Dre's music like that, but I can say this, his headphones revolutionized the way I played my video games on the go. And so, you know, my heart goes out to his family. You know, I hope he recovers from this brain aneurysm. For those, oh, who, do- yeah. for those who don't know in the medical world, an aneurysm is when a blood vessel pops in your brain and the blood leaks in your brain um, and starts to cause damage. So I hope, um, you know, I say a prayer out there to the universe that may he recover um, from this. You know, sorry to even hear that this happened to him. So. Same. Um, Hell his, yeah. his headphones, by the way, Hell yeah. at some point would um, be sold over to Apple. Apple would buy him out. And of course, when Apple got their hands on it, the headphones were not the same. So. If you want to support his original label, please buy his Gen 1 and Gen 2 headphones. And you'll see the difference. And last but not least, in the news wave here, wanted to mention um, this was a special request from Kitty Kaboom. I actually didn't know who he was. Jared Nadine, also known as the South Park guy, Warcraft, um, Warcraft um, cosplayer, um, has passed away from COVID-19 at the age of 40. It turns out he was battling this um, affliction for quite some time. Um, He was a bit private about it. Um, And then I guess towards the maturing of the affliction, he started to do some videos about his health, giving people an update of what he was going through. Um, He is also known for helping to start with anime conventions in the anime scene, um, behind the scenes, setting up the infrastructure of our modern day Japanese anime. the fandom. Um, he was also very progressive in promoting b- um, body consciousness and the beauty of cosplay in all shapes and sizes. Um, Kitty, would you like to add some more to this? Um, yeah, not not only that. I mean, I've, I've known Jared in my 20 years of cosplay. He was actually one of the first friends I made in the cosplay community. And we met because he was a giant, giant robo fan. And I actually got to do um, a cosplay skit and play Ginray from Giant Robo as we reenacted one of the scenes from the Giant Robo movie. Um, Again, Jared was a great guy. He was always happy, always genuinely smiling, had a great big heart. And he he was actually one of the pioneers for uh, body positivity in cosplay. So he he loved his old retro, you know, mecha animes and, you know, like Yamato and Giant Robo. And it really just breaks my heart that, you know, he had so many complications with COVID towards the end. It's basically a, a bacterial infection from the pneumonia that just spread and just weakened him to a state that unfortunately he did pass away. Um, I'll, I'll honestly tell you guys, it's going to be really hard. Uh, going back to anime conventions in the future and not having him there. But I love Jared so much. He was a great friend and he will always be remembered in the cosplay and anime community. I, he was such a, a great person all around that a lot of people respected and, you know, were inspired, especially because of the body positivity and cosplay. So 
we will never forget you, Jared. I, I love you so much. Um, you know, and you are, you're always going to be remembered in, in our hearts. So if, if anybody wants to help contribute to Jared, uh, there is a GoFundMe for his uh, funeral costs because his mother is struggling right now with it. So there is um, a GoFundMe. We can post up links later. But if anybody wishes to contribute, uh, we will have that up for you as well. So. All righty. Thank you. All right. That has concluded our news wave section of the Strike First Gaming Show. Moving forward, I'm going to start with you, Cobra Kai Tone. What do you have for us in our latest in your toy box? All right, everybody. Uh, today, we were going to be digging into the world of pixel art collectibles. So, you know, toys and artwork, and art, uh, toys that can be artwork. Um, so, you know, digging into what uh, pixel art is, you know, pixel art is digital imagery, you know what I mean? Digital artwork where all the objects are made up of a pixel. You make multiple pixels, different colors to make objects and and uh, people and places and things like that. So it originally started when uh, 1972, uh, a man named Richard Shope from Xerox. Yep, Xerox Palo Alto Research uh, Center. He uh, created a, a system called, it was called Super Paint. And Super Paint was the first system that actually did digital graphics and animation. They used this for uh, originally for like uh, TV commercials and things like that and also for animation for NASA. So it was years down the line where it got into video games where, you know, the most popular of, you know, pixel art and pixel imagery is, you know, our 8-bit, 16-bit systems, NES, SNES, Sega, Sega Genesis, a bunch of other systems, but, you know, those are being the most popular that everyone knows. And so I'm going to dig into some things that will remind you of some nostalgia, nostalgia from the 8-bit and 16-bit world. You know, that goes back from, you know, for us to the 80s, or early 90s. So uh, starting off, we're going to start with uh, Funko. So Funko Pop has its 8-bit line. And today I start you with Ryu, Ryu, Ryu-san. So, you know what I mean? This, uh, you know about Funko. They have every character. They'll go from Street Fighter to Stranger Things. So you can find a bunch of characters. If you can't find them, they will come out with a character. Funko Pop has <laughs> anything and everything. So started you guys off with this one. It's very cool. Nice, nice, nice. I want to go get the rest of them whenever I can find them, get the can and get the Kumas and Chun Li's and all the originals. So we go for Funko Pop. And you know, that thing uh, originates uh, at $8.99. Anything at Funko Pop, you get those at uh, your big box stores, you know, Walmart, Target, you can get it at your Game Stops. You can get them at your comic book stores. Funko Pop is everywhere. It's, it's not going to be hard to find. So make sure you look into the, the 8-bit series. And then now collecting on those, I started getting into Pixel Pals by Performance Design Products, PDP. And I start you off with Akuma. This oh, is very sure. cool. This is not a Funko. This is its own, own toy line and brand. This thing is very cool because it lights up. You put a AAA battery in there, Akuma mm -hmm. lights up. It's not just a figure. You can use this, uh, you know, supplemental light, night light, you know, just for decoration. That's what I love about the Pixel Pal. So uh, you can get this on PDP.com. You can find this. I got this one at GameStop. Uh, originally, I think they're like $9.99, and they can go up to $14.99 on aftermarket. So this is a very cool one. I have a question for you, Tone. Yes. Now, the real question here is, are the people from River City Ransom and Super Dodgeball getting paid? Because that's how those characters look, like straight up. That's some River City Ransom Renegade. Capcom edition. Hey man, you know, these they have Capcom lines, you know, both Funko and PDP have Capcom lines. So, I mean, if they don't have it now, if you keep asking, they'll probably make one for you. <laughs> that's, that's what I love about uh, companies that have the licensing from Capcom, you know what I mean? We can just start asking and they might come just like what I do with my other toy companies. I just start asking and asking, start making up blogs and conversations. So, but yeah, so continuing on for Pixel Pal, I have Red Link. This one is very cool. It comes with green, it is a green link, white link, and a red link. You know, the different rings give you the different uh, suits and power. This is a uh, very cool, also lights up with the AAA battery. Uh, I got this at $9.99. I believe you can catch it for $12 to $14.99. The white link 
and the green link are more expensive than this one and a little bit harder to find. So going from that, we're going from Funko and then we went to Pixel Pals. Now we're gonna jump into Jack Specific. Jack Specific has a few things uh, going for the digital uh, pixel art style of you know items. So I'm gonna start you with some plushies. We got Mega Man and Rush. You know Aww. what I'm saying? This is cool. this is so cool to have. This you know what adorable. I mean? Yeah, put this on your pillow. You know what I mean? On your couch, whatever your bed. You know what I mean? It's very cool. Very That's nice cool. and soft. Uh, these are fourteen ninety nine, and you know we couldn't have those guys cool. without you know prototype. Proto oh. man. You know what I mean? You know everybody's favorite. So you know, all right. And then um, they continue on with a lot. They have a lot of Mega Man with Jack specific. Um, they have this very nice versus line. Wow. So, you know, you got Gutsman right there. Uh, they have a Leckman. They have uh, Cutsman. Cutman. They have a uh, few more I don't believe I have. Uh, this is very cheap. You can get this at GameStop and a bunch of other places, too. Jack Specific is usually in a lot of places. They have made licensing agreements. and Not, not licensing agreements, but uh, accounts with a lot of big uh, big box stores. Uh, they also have singles for, like, $4.99. This one was $9.99. I found the uh, Leckman on sale for like six eighty seven on Target, so if you want to get one of those, get it for hella cheap. They're not expensive. Very cool to have. I love Mega Man. Mega Man Two is my favorite out of them all. Also, continuing on with Jacks Pacific, you know, you get things like Super Mario, Mario vs Bowser. Wow, that's so. You know what I mean? Even just the box. The, I'm not gonna even take it out the box. The diorama yeah, on the box to. already just it's like a diorama. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. That's a good one. It's, that's a real good one. Jack specific people, not not expensive at all. I believe this is only like wow. maybe twelve ninety nine, ten ninety nine, ninety nine ninety. It would be kind of the same as the rest. They don't really get too expensive. I got this one at GameStop also. Wow. And then getting to away from the retail stuff, you know, you can always go to your favorite uh, vendors at video game conventions or art conventions, and you can find your your pixel. Your pixels in little just <laughs> forms like this, where you could put it around your neck. You know what I'm saying? You got Goku. I'm gonna rock Goku for the rest of the day. But, you know, I got Super Saiyan Blue. Got Goku going wild. You know, we got Final Form Sale. Yep. We got Mega Man X. Dope. Oh, I like that we got pose. Proto Man. Nice. We got Samus from Metroid. Wow, that's crazy. Link from Zelda. These things, are cheap. <laughs> these things are cheap, you know. Uh, these things Link go to the past. from five. The bigger ones probably go for like I think seven, eight bucks. So not expensive at all. You can do really creative things with this artistically as well as put them around your neck and wear them as a medallion, which is very mm -hmm. cool to me. I got these uh, at the video game tournaments all through 2019 between yeah. uh, Combo Breaker all the way to Evo. So you know, always look out for those guys. It's very nice to see people do custom art things like that. And then also, at your very favorite uh, conventions, you find things like this. Yep. You know, Ken vs. Ryu. I got this at a vendor in uh, Evo, Las Vegas, 2019. Very cool. Uh, I believe these were like 45 each. 3D. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? You can see it. The fireball goes over the hands, the body's over the background. Very cool. These are super detailed. Some of my favorite. I and want then, uh, that. I want that bad. That is oh, so fire to have like in your doorway. Or if you had <laughs> sliding doors and then it came together and that was like on it, that would be fire. So when I bought these, actually I bought this in 2018. When I bought this the first time at Evo, I went in and got even deeper. It was like, I'm a true fan and looked for actually their, their booth. And I actually grabbed this one. Let me see if I can back it up and get this one in there. We got Mega Man X, you know, charging up his blaster mm -hmm. running in 3D with the 3D background. Very and that cool. was all that was all done with the the pixel art all pixel art how all much was that mini pixels i believe this one was like i think 135 or something like that it's a, it comes in a very thick frame nice frame too you can see the depth of how this thing is it's it's yeah <laughs> very cool it's one of my favorite That's art beautiful. pieces as well as this one this is the most expensive one i bought from them this was a limited edition that they did and i got this at evo 2019 las vegas you know, Hamaru and Nakaruru. So, wow. nice. yeah, yeah, this is so cool. You can see that the blade, you know what I mean? It's 3D. Everything is the wind much bows. up there. Nice. You know, we got the cherry blossoms and the, the tsunami. So very traditional Japanese on how they design it. Very happy with that. 
But, um, you know, with things like this, uh, you can't go wrong. Pixel, pixel, digital, pixel art going into physical form. It's very Finally. nostalgic. It's so us. Um, it's so much more. I, I just, I'm going to show you guys a couple, a couple things that I was actually looking at that I don't have that I want to uh, put in my collection. So, like I told you, I want to get that Pixel Pal Ken, you know. Uh, we got Sub Zero. Yeah. We got Raiden. Yep. Mega Man with the big pixels. Uh, this is from a company called, I believe this company is called Level Up Labs. This is from Level Up Labs. They have very nice video game scenes, in game scenes like Sonic. Um, they also do this Mario, which is very cool. That's it. Wow. Final Fantasy III. That one <laughs> on is Sitch. nuts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So Final Fantasy III in US. We got. <gasps> wow. Super, Super Mario, Mario World. World. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. yeah Marie. Very beautiful. Got Link version of that one. We have magnets. So, you know what I mean? You can make your own. That's yeah, very cool. Like and. Hands. Like I said, you could get creative with these things. You know, he got his plants and he put them into planters and made his own garden out of, you know, and this is made out of wood. So you can get really creative with these things. You can even make them on your own. Uh, do not sleep on pixel art, everybody. I'm a fan. <laughs> and that's what I got for you guys today. Just a couple things in that. I was going to bring up that Mega Man um, pixel light if if you didn't have it because I'm just like, all right, you, you have to at least get that one because that's one of the first ones I saw when they came out a few years back that I thought that was the coolest thing, especially the, the like the fact that they light up like that. They're just you just go crazy in your room with those things. Oh, yeah. And that is the world of Tones Collectibles for this week. All right. Thank you. What a what a audacious collection you have for us today. It was a handful of stuff. Thank oh, you. Oh yeah. Moving forward, we're gonna go with you, Doctor B, Galaxy B. What's going on with your your hip hop and anime and fashion? What what's happening? Well, you know, check it out. So usually I always bring some shoes out. You know what I'm saying? But today I'm getting on the gear. You know what I'm saying? So I'm bringing out some denim let's start with some denim but it's not no jeans it's a jacket and it's oh. right here ice cream during your boys ice cream has a polka dot denim jacket and it's crazy mm. right but if you look close they're not polka dots they're the silhouette Ooh, of the cones and bones like skull and crossbones but it's an ice cream mm -hmm. cone in the middle and it's just a silhouette on it really dope jacket um always comes with the collector tag and sticker the running dog ice cream running dog there um also great leather work on the back says ice cream right there it's fire and this is just kind of like something you could throw on with a whole bunch of different looks to it has some um stitching details like so right there on the front and um i love this this is just you know we feel like being kind of saved by the bell with it you know you just throw that on <laughs> so, next up we gonna go it's time to like go to the beach or something. So I got this. This is the ice cream cones and bones dice flavored button up. So it's a it's a short sleeve button up. Um, comes in this cool collector bag. And if you look close, there's some ice cream cones that has dice in there. Um, has hundred dollar bills in some of them. It's here. I'll show you that one. The hundred dollar bills in there and stuff. It's really really detailed and dope it's a fun shirt it's like if i go to hawaii or like you know i go even to japan or anywhere i'm gonna wear something like this people gonna like it i already know so this is the ice cream uh dice flavored shirt my last little one i'm gonna show is awesome and it's the ice cream girl on the popsicle tea so it's the girl Ooh. she's sitting on a popsicle Actually, it's like a bowl of ice cream, this one. I have a popsicle tea, but it's like she's sitting on a bowl of ice cream. Really cool. I, mean, I like that color. Yeah, yeah, the color's off the hook. Um, lots of detail. The uh, The company that designs these characters before is called Rocking Jelly Bean, and they're a really big company that does like kind of like tank girl looking art. Um, mm -hmm. But doing their know. boys club and ice cream hired Rock and Jelly Bean to do collaboratives of all their girl characters and 
um, female models sitting on bowls of ice cream and like popsicles and stuff. And I have a whole bunch of them in my collection, but this is the latest one. I really like it. She's wearing like some dope shoes. This is something for the summer, for Hawaii, for when I'm in Florida, something next time we go to CEO. And that's what that is. You know what I'm saying? So those are like the latest things that I'm rocking. Now, we're going to get into the music. You know what I'm saying? Musically right now, it seems like in hip hop, gaming world, everything, everything's kind of on pause. So a lot of people are kind of creatively trying to find new ways to bring themselves out in music and express themselves, especially with the pandemic going on and everything. So I've been kind of staying off the mainstream wave because everyone's kind of putting out stuff that's watered down. And I'm listening to a lot of underground artists and like up and coming artists and musicians, because a lot of them kind of have the voice of like, what's present and now and they kind of have the voice of what's present and now regardless of the pandemic so i've been just looking out for new upcoming people so there's not one person i can just put a thumb on but it's just a several the, the whole wavelength of underground music i'm following right now just new people on to come up they seem to be hungrier they're thirstier especially in these times and um so support underground artists y'all and that's my segment on the music and fashion back to you in the studio cookie Oh, thank you. I'm really liking that shirt with the tank girl on it. Right, um, it's off the hook. Um, I'm not sure if my color is right with this shirt, but it looked like a cerulean blue. Hey, cerulean blue works. Was that cerulean blue? <laughs> yeah, I, I like the background. Not sure, too sure about the girl on the ice cream, but right, right. I do like the solid color of the backdrop. So there you go. I'll look into that for myself. Hey. I'm digging that. I'm digging the Hawaiian style shirt. It reminds me of uh, a shirt I was just talking about earlier today. Uh, SNK came out with Hawaiian style Neo Geo print and SNK character print what? Hawaiian shirt. Here's here's the here's the heartbreaking part. They were only in a pop up shop in Okinawa oh. for the summer line last year, and none of us could fly over there and grab them. Mm -hmm. But um, you probably will be able to find them on, you know, like Japan Yahoo and Japan auction sites. But there mm -hmm. are straight Neo Geo and SNK Hawaiian shirts out there. And they are mm -hmm. gorgeous and they are fire. Like, oh, God, I can't tell you how close I was to trying to grab one. Um, it, they Because they did a whole summer line last year. Mm -hmm. And they had, it was based in Okinawa because of Mina from Samurai Showdown. So it had her as the as the main mascot for that. And then it had all the other girls in their summer outfits and clothing. And then they just had like a whole summer line. And it's mm. absolutely beautiful. And um, if you guys can try to find it and look it up, like it, it's worth it just to see. And if any of you find the shirts for sale, please let me know because I'm probably going to go in with you and snag that. Help on shipping. <laughs> cool. And B, I like that. Uh, I like that jean jacket because you know uh, it's a lot of uh, '90s have been around for a few years now. And you mm -hmm. know, one thing about the '90s was the jean jacket, man. You know, denim everywhere, and all, yeah. all, also with the jacket. So that's. that's and I got and I got a pair of jeans that kind of match it, which makes it even dope. So I'm planning on kind of wearing it as a as a homage to the 90s with a jean jacket outfit, kind of. So I like that, man. It's coming. Well, moving forward, what's going yep. on, Kitty, with your cosplay and stuff? What Tell us what's happening in your world. Um, Actually, I'm going to, not much in the cosplay world right now, Um, but we've already covered that. But I wanted to talk about what was going on uh, with SNK this, the, this past uh, week along with the King of Fighters 15 trailer and the Samurai show, uh, Showdown Season 3 uh, new DLC that they announced, mm -hmm. including, you know, um, Hibiki from The Last Blade. Is Not surprised. Yep. I mean, come on now. She was already in CVS, too. We knew she was going to come back. <laughs> Kind of. Kind of a lot of people didn't uh, guess that one, though. People were thinking about some of the other characters, but um, yes, but running for sure. I, you know, I kind of thought they might go, you know, final boss, but they didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, a few other people have that guess too, but you know, she's she's a good fit, and I figured since she already was in CBS two that they would probably bring her back for the fans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, 
unfortunately, there was a bit of an issue that happened. Um, SNK did postpone uh, the announcement, but um, it was very quick. It was only for about less okay. than 24 hours. Yeah. But the fans is the thing that really got to me with the whole situation. The fans, it how, and this is this is a subject I want to bring up with supporting um, video game companies, uh, game developers, and so on in our community. If you say that you love, you know, a company like SNK and all their games, then why are you so you know, quick to attack them and be negative and show no support whatsoever, but just be angry that you had to wait 24 hours until, you know, they were ready to show the release. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very disappointing because I want you fans out there to remember Japan and the rest of us are in this pandemic and they just reached a state of emergency shortly after this trailer was supposed to be out. And mm -hmm. instead of, you know, saying, oh my God, I hope people at SNK are okay. I hope everyone's safe. That's really terrible news, but you know what? We'll wait, it's cool. Everybody did the exact opposite and just started bitching, complaining, Die, and bitch. for no reason. Just like, <laughs> how could you betray us? How could you do this to us? I hate you. Oh God, this is gonna be crap all over again. It's just like, sweeties, no, look, that's not how you support something you love. Like, you can't be doing that to these people who have worked their asses off to make us a video game. And as far as I can remember, even in the early 2000s, weren't we just happy as all hell to get a new game? Like when there was an announcement back then, I was never angry. I was like, God, this is taking too long. Mm -hmm. And I kind of have to blame this on, you know, how social media is and just too much freedom that people have on Twitter. They feel like they have the rights to just bitch and complain to the people who are making these games. No, buddy. I'm sorry. But if we're going to get through this pandemic, if you want better games, if you want the companies you love to continue making games you want to see, mm. you have to actually show real support. Mm -hmm. And that means not constantly screaming, yelling, bitching and complaining at these game devs or community managers or you know the directors or producers of these games it means that you're going to be supporting them showing them cheering them on giving them positivity and i know we want roll back net code but they haven't forgotten the last 50,000 times you guys tweeted about it 20 minutes ago they'll get to it have faith in these companies mm -hmm. the only way you're going to get your roll back net code is if you're purchasing the games they're bringing out. And if they're gonna give us, you know, UM2000 with rollback netcode, they've given us Mark of the Wolves with rollback netcode. Are you guys purchasing these games? Right. Are you guys making sure that we have a future coming in and money coming in so you can get more Sam show, we can get sequels? For the love mm -hmm. of God, I know, even though it's only Cookie and I that want Warriors Rage characters back, but <laughs> I'm going to keep throwing money at it until I get my girl, Mikoto, all right? Like, that's, this is how we should be supporting. There's yeah. a time and place for everything. If you're going to constantly bitch and cry and moan to a company, like, what good is that? Did it work on your parents when you wanted something? No. What makes you think these people are going to just stop everything they're doing and just cater to you? Mm -hmm. It's it's a win-win situation. It's a yin-yang thing when you're willing to show support, purchase games, purchase merch, help them out, and give them positive feedback instead of just balance. anger mm -hmm. and negativity. This is how it worked in the past, and I'm just going to say this right now. I thank the universe right now that SNK is still alive, okay? <sighs> I was crying my head off thinking in the early 2000s, this company was going to die and everything I love, it's all going to be gone and it's going to be nothing but a memory. But here we are getting a new Sam show. We're getting last blade characters in it. 
you're getting rolled back on your favorite KOF games, and I'm sure it's going to continue to happen. So let's just try to, you know, in the future, support a company with positivity, make sure you're getting stuff from them, let them know positive feedback, and you don't have to remind them every five seconds about rollback netcode, all right? They're working on it. I'm sure they understand. I'm sure they've heard you scream it for the past three years. So let's just show love and support. If you love SNK, if you want more of these games, I know I do. And, and let's be real here. If they're already bringing Last Play characters into Sam show, who knows? We could be seeing a new Last Play remake. Not only that, you got World Heroes merchandise from Storm Collectibles coming out. What if this continues to prosper and we get a new World Heroes? There's a ton of possibilities here. But the thing is, is that you just have to not be so negative out there if you want these things. And just basically PSA here, show more positivity with the video game companies you love. Let them know how happy you are. And once again, just be helping them out, purchasing the games, all the good stuff. And trust me, it'll happen. It's already on its way. They're already, you know, taking steps and doing these small baby step experiments for rollback netcode. Read between the lines. See what they're doing and just support them. And honestly, I'm really glad that everyone at SNK so far that I know of is safe and healthy and they're doing okay in this state of emergency that they're in. So, you know, SNK, love you guys. Mwah, take care. And I cannot wait for KOF 15. Everything looks amazing. And in this coming week, we're getting another sneak peek and another little trailer. So keep your eyes on that on SNK's YouTube, which is SNK Games. So I'm hoping that um, with the other two characters for the Sam Show timeline, mm -hmm. the newest one that we're playing, I um I wasn't surprised that they chose Hibiki. <clears throat> However, <coughs> excuse me. What I am kind of surprised is the timeline, because you see, Last Blade takes place almost two hundred years after the end of Warriors Rage. Mm -hmm. It's it's the last, the true last of the samurai era, and so Hibiki is born much 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 later. So yeah. I want to know how they're implementing her storyline. That means she must be, what, 400 years old? That, that makes no sense. <laughs> However... I think they're going uh, Street Fighter Five ways with this, where it's just, uh, just not going to get answers because the timeline is so messed up with all these different characters coming in. Well, well, uh, well, well Street Fighter Five does have answers, and I, I'm going to save that for a later video. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then... You know, I'm hoping actually because the timeline is before Yuga steps in, mm. I would like to see I would like to see Yuga in this game. Mm. Oh, That'd yeah. be the only male character I would play with. Yuga the Destroyer. That's it. Like since they're doing since they're doing all of this, I'm like, okay, there's two more slots. Oh. I'd like to see him. <laughs> Yuga and Genin, let's do it. Yeah. So. As much as I know it probably wouldn't work, but uh, Reiwa would be another one. I would okay. like to see her. Because they got Rimu and they got Naku, so, you know, why not just have them all in there? All of them, you know? That'd be mm -hmm. cool. They have, they have, that they have, to have another season coming. I want the yeah. boss with the crystal orbs, the, the one that uses the crystal orbs. Amakusa. Amakusa. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. Makusa. You, you, are not the only one. Too. you are not the only one. I was just having this conversation earlier with a few friends. They, I they wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if they did put him as one of the last two characters, either him or the female boss, Mizushi. Mm -hmm. right. uh, honestly, I feel he would be really fitting. I, yeah. I think that would be the best choice. So. Mm -hmm. Well, he comes, he comes after. You know, they show his orb, you know, at the end of the credits. So mm -hmm. it, it, would, it just makes sense. So. Yeah, exactly. Oh. And, you know, when everybody saw that orb, yeah, that's what we were all thinking, too. They have to, you know, tie it in at some point. point. So it would make sense. If there was going to be a sequel to this game, that that would be great to put him in towards the end and then just have however they're going to have the story continue on after that. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Well, thank you. Well, as usual, I'm going to go last with Cookie's Mythological Moments. 
And today I decided to um, talk about someone. I haven't talked about their storyline yet. Kind of wanted to make, um, clear up the confusion on Cereza. Cereza is the real life name of Bayonetta. So I'm going to start my little shared screen here. Let's see, aha, here we go. All righty, so, <clears throat> you know, in a nutshell, Bayonetta is the sorceress witch who was born out of a love interest between a Lumen Sage and a Umbra witch. I can go over to the picture, that being them. You know, the sages were the descendants who fought on behalf of God, that's him in the white, and the witches were the ones who served the demons. And I guess because this intersection of light and dark happened, it caused strife between Paradiso being heaven, mm -hmm. hell, you know, but inferno, and caused an all out war between the sages and the witches that led to their mutual destruction because of the birth of their child, Bayonetta. She would have both the powers of both a sage and a witch. However, you would find out in the later games that there was much more bigger powers at play that the so-called treasure that they were after is something called the left eye, which is a piece of reality that allows one who wields it to control a fabric, not only of the universe, but of reality itself. The left eye was given to the Umbra witches and the right eye was given to the Lumen Sages. Let's go back to him. And in this picture depicted right here, which is a scene out of Bayonetta 2, goes into the true origins of what was going on, which leads me to the source of my story here. So this, this is what's known as sacred geometry in the world of sorcery, if you're a practitioner of witchcraft. And these three circles, I'm gonna move my mouse here, these three circles right here, of representation of different realities. This is Paradiso, which is known as heaven. This is Inferno, which is hell. And this is Earth, which is the plane that we're in. And in between right here is Purgatorio. So there was a God known as Aesir, which is him, how the story goes. And Aesir was, one of the, was the God of chaos and earth was born from chaos. And he pitied the people of earth, of our reality, because he felt that humans were too weak to have free will. And so in order for us to have free will, he sacrificed his eyes, one being of light and one being of dark. So not only do they represent light and dark, they also represent men and women. So that's why he has no genitalia. And in the comic theme of the perfection of a being in Japanese mythology or in Asian mythology, it's usually a being of the light. When you are a being of light, you have no genitalia. You are both man and woman wrapped in one entity. So he sacrificed his eyes and he gave the left eye to the Umber witches and he gave the right eye to the Lumen sages, this guy being right here. And they, they kept up the balance between light and dark for hundreds of thousands of years. Until, of course, the sage and the witch came together, found each other attractive, fell in love, and get, you know, you know, fill in the blank from there. And then they, they had a child, which is her, Bayonetta. When the witch hunt started, they decimated all of the witch clan, the Lumen sages. And what you find out is, in time that this character here, he is the orchestrator who wanted to get his eyes back. So what he gave out, he wanted to receive back. So he created a coup within Paradiso and had all of the servants of God, or in this case, the Lumen Sages, launch that war against the witches. And that's what led to their, that's what led to their mutual destruction, only leaving Bayonetta's father, Father Boulder, going back to this picture right here, and Bayonetta alive. But what they didn't know is also the lady that sealed Bayonetta away to protect the left eye from Paradiso claiming it was her best friend, mm. the Umber Witch, Jean, who's my favorite character. Based off of a virtual fighter character. Uh-huh. She is next in line to become the Umber Witches. She is the true queen of the Umber Witches, but in her, in her job as the queen of the witches was to protect her best friend, Cereza, 
who is Bayonetta, who would go on this journey, a pilgrimage, to find out about her lost past when Jean sealed her away for 500 years. That's in the first game. And the second game just goes more deeper into the fact that the trinity of realities, there were three different gods, a god of Paradiso, a god of Inferno, and a god of Chaos, which is Earth here, our world. And by the end of the second game, Bayonetta defeats Aesir. And of course, now the balance is more disrupted. So the concept, or we assume that for Bayonetta 3, that is still in the works by Chemia and Platinum Games, that Bayonetta will now be fighting a new god character, either of Paradiso or of Inferno, or possibly within Purgatorio. So this is something I've never touched on before. I've played Bayonetta backwards and forwards. This is an image of Rosa, Bayonetta's mother, who was imprisoned for falling in love with the Lumen Sage. Those chains that are on her body right here are a symbol, are a symbol of um, her everlasting torture from the witches that have um, turned against her. So maybe in the third game, they'll talk about male witches known as warlocks. Maybe they'll talk about that. Um, of course, back to the scene where you find out how the war was actually incited and how they used Balder as a, as a tool to actually lead the war against the witches. And Bayonetta's mother gets shot in the back trying to protect the man that she loves by the person who really started the war, which was Aesir right here. So that is my, in a nutshell, history of Bayonetta and how deep it is. I could go much more deeper within the hierarchies of Maguna, which is are the angels and the demons. In the second game, she's hunted by both demons and angels that are trying to come after her. Versus the first game, she's fighting all the angels of Paradiso. So um, Bayonetta takes from a lot of um, popular culture of not only the Bible, but the Gnostic Gospels, the Apocrypha, the story of Inki, the Emerald Tablets. Um, and it's also, uh, most importantly, which I don't want to forget but want to touch on, the language of the angels, um, which is a specific, I can't remember what the name of the language is, but um, it's, um, I think it's called Enochian, because when the angels and the demons speak in, um, in, this, um, in, the, in the video game, they speak Enochian, which is referring to the book of Enoch, which of those basically are extraterrestrials that came to Earth hundreds of thousands of years ago when the Earth was more imbalanced and could receive visitations from other planetary life. You know, so now they, they're referencing to other light beings and other entities and other forces that are outside of this planet, but from the other cosmos. So that's the type of enemies on Bayonetta's fighting. Also, it pulls from the hierarchy of angels where there are thrones, powers, seraphims, um, archangels, all the way down to the lowest end. And she'll fight these different angels and different demons of hierarchy as the game progresses. You know, um, as I've played this game backwards and forwards to get like the highest score that I can get, the highest, uh, I guess they go by medals. So each battle is considered a verse. And when you finish the battle, the verse is finished and you'll get a medal either from a stone medal all the way to the highest, which is pure platinum. So the concept is to get the highest combo without dropping the combo while activating witch time without getting hit while finishing the battle in a certain amount of time. So it's time, combo, and not getting hit. Those are the three ranks. And when you finish a verse, getting a platinum in all those different areas, you get a pure platinum. When you finish all the verses with pure platinum, then you can get a pure platinum trophy for the entire chapter. And that's kind of how the ranking system is in Bayonetta. It's basically the female version of Devil May Cry. So, and that is my story in a nutshell of Bayonetta. And what I hope to see for Bayonetta 3. Any questions? Oh, yeah. All right, so moving <laughs> forward. Oh, hey, okay, I, that means I guess I was thorough. 
Yeah, go no, there. No, no. Very thorough. I saw, Thank you, Cookie, for when, laying it when out like to it Japan, is. I saw you playing Bayonetta 2, and I was like, I want to play that game. So, Oh, B. You must play yeah, that, that game. the game is the game is so detailed. Not only does it touch on the, the, the depths of Christianity, of the Buddha, of other different religions, talking about the enemies from different worlds, from different from different levels of reality that are beyond our own that you would only be able to see through astral projection. Wow. Um, oh yeah, that's that's how heavy this game is. Um, I'm hollering back um, at making sure that I'm word. updated with every version because I know I at least have one or <clears throat> two on, on my system already. But what's, your, what's your question? I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. Say that again. Oh, I was saying that um, I wanted to make sure that I update my system with that so I could start playing it and really get into it. Now that I know that it has all this mysticism to it, I'm a little more intrigued to play it now that it has a deeper story. Cause I thought it was just a run around, shoot them up, kind of Devil May Cry looking game. Now that it has- It is. Story, yeah, it is. but now that it has a content of ancient story to it and- mm, Story is solid, and, bro. You gotta, you gotta like dwell into it real good. Yeah, I didn't know it hit that deep, actually. I really didn't. With the releases of the game, um, when it first came out, it came out for Xbox 360 and for PS3. PS3, which as it, horribly. As it, as it progressed, you know, it was released on the Wii U, the Switch, and now PS4. If you want to get the full experience, I suggest mm. you either play it on the Switch because you could get both games, um, and or the Wii U, which has the both games. You know, the first game is really about her journey to rediscover and get back her memory, who she was 500 years ago as an Umbra witch and the sacred clan that was decimated by the Lumen Sages. And then the second game goes deeper into trying to figure out what are the eyes of the world and why was her clan given the left eye? Why was the sages given the right eye? What are these so-called gems that they were entrusted by a God that gave it to them and now all of a sudden mm -hmm. wants to take it away and cause and imbalance. So mm. that's so that's what that's about. Um, so I say either the Switch or the Wii Switch. U because those systems have both the original and the sequel. Right. You so know, one more the, question. Yeah. You showed a grid that showed a trinity of things, and you what it was the term of that grid? It's, it has like the heaven. Oh yeah. Hell, I could go back to that real quickly. You said it's something alchemy, or I, I forgot. It's a term. It's known as known as sacred geometry. Oh, sacred geometry. I like that. I like so, that term. So sacred, um, here we go. Let me go back to it. Y'all can see that? I'm yep. writing okay. that down. So sacred geometry um, is a term used in witchcraft and also within sorcery. As a practitioner of sorcery, this is something that will be known as um, divine knowledge or collective consciousness of understanding that there is... A, a layer and a shield between our own world that's as thin as tissue paper. And to step through that world, to step through that portal into that reality, it's just a changing in your own electronic frequency and your own consciousness. So when mm. we go to so when we go to sleep at night, we enter something called the dream state. When we have dreams, we're entering another reality. The dream world and the reality world is one and the same. When you can control what you're doing in your dream is called a lucid dream. When you, have mm. a when you have a vision in your dream, it could be either from the past or a version of your higher self in the future. Mm. So a lot right. of us, you know, it is said that a lot of us are not really from this planet. We all come from different planets and we choose from that plane of existence to incarnate onto this planet to live out what's called the human experience. When we incarnate, we go through the portal and that portal is known as the vagina, mm -hmm. you know. That's the portal that we enter through into this reality. And as we grow up, and if you continue to wake yourself up into the awareness, you can retrieve back the lost powers that you once have from where you truly came from. Wow, that's deep. So, oh yeah, and so this sacred geometry right here is just letting us know that we're not really worlds apart from Paradiso or Purgatorio or Inferno or wherever, what other planet. We're only a dream state away are only astral projection away when the soul leaves the body and you're now functioning on a different dimensional frequency. Hmm. Very good. We have to very touch deep. that on a different episode. You, I want. I definitely want to learn more about that and you're very versed mm -hmm. in it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So 
moving forward, that brings us to the topic of our discussion. I'm very excited because I'm going to see what all of you have to say about this. The topic is what guest star characters do you feel should have appeared in a video game as a promotion? So they can be comic book characters, video game characters, but what characters do you feel should have either showed up in a crossover game during a promotional launch? So, good example. Link showed up in Soul Calibur 2. Yep. Showed it Darth Vader. Yep. You know, Yoda. Uh -huh. Yoda. Yoda. Noctis shows up in Tekken 7. They're all from different games, mm -hmm. different platforms. So what do you feel should have been a character that showed up in a crossover game? Or even widening it even more, what should have been a crossover game to begin with? I'll and start I'll, with this one. I, uh, go on. Oh, go for it. So I was going to start off by I, saying I've always been a fan of Soul Calibur, even though I don't play it on a tournament level. And they've had quite a number of guest star characters throughout time. I feel that whether it be Soul Calibur or even the new Samurai Showdown, one character that should have made an appearance which would have helped make that game a comeback is E.G. from Battle Arena Toshinden. <laughs> Battle, Arena Toshin mm -hmm. Battle Arena Toshinden was the first weapons-based game, 3D fighter with weapons-based because everyone had a weapon, yeah. and it was the first 3D fighting game that had sidestepping. First one for both. And Takara, even though they didn't give them too much of a chance, I felt that if there was more an investment in that company, that game could have went on the level of either Samurai Showdown or either Soul Calibur. It could have went in either direction. And I felt that in terms of a guest star character and to bring people back to the beginning of weapon-based combat, they could have brought E.G. back from Battle Arena Toshin. He was a protagonist with the original Katana sword. And they could have updated his sprites, however they may be, with some special licensing from Takara to do it, whether it be in an Amco game or an SMK game. Huh? Okay, I like that. So uh, for me, uh, I'm thinking about Bonk from Bonk's Adventure, TurboGrafx-16. Isn't, yeah. isn't that Chuck Rock's son? That's Chuck Rock's son, right? <laughs> So <laughs> this guy needs to be in a smash. He needs to be in a smash line. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, he's the nice leading. He's the leading uh, leading franchise for Topographic Sixteen. Yep. He deserves a spot in the Smash world. He would be great for launching and then coming down off the launch back to the platform and bonk somebody off. Mm -hmm. It would be just a fun character. Everybody who from this era remembers who Bonk is. Remembers all the commercials. It would be a perfect fit for Nintendo and for Smash. That's that that that's 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 who I think. Oh my that's god, a, I remember that game. Wow, flashbacks all of a sudden. That was great. <laughs> I had that game for Game Gear. I had this sequel and they didn't even call it Bonk in America, they called it Chuck Rock's son. So I had Chuck Rock Two, son of Chuck, because I didn't have the first one. So the second game was all about his son. Mm -hmm. And I beat the game. I beat the game with him. I played that game beer game until I mm -hmm. beat it. It was hard, but it was a fun game. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll go next. Um, for me, the list is kind of long. I, I've shortened it down a bit. Um, <laughs> okay, so I I haven't been able to play Tifa since Urguys, and she was phenomenal in Urguys. And not uh, only yeah. do I wish for that game to be a remake someday, and I'm still, you know, hoping for that, but I would have loved to see her in Tekken 7. Darn it. I would have absolutely have loved that. And then, you know, on top of that, um, whatchamacallit, since we're talking, you know, Sam Show and uh, Soul Calibur, I basically would um, highly suggest we already had Hao Maru swap over from um, Sam Show 2, Soul Calibur 6. Mm -hmm. So I would really love to see um, Grow in Sam Show. I, I actually, you know, and yes, he is my favorite. Yes, slight favoritism here. But 
I think he would be a great fit. I could totally see him having some issue with Yashomaru and those two going at it. And um, I don't know if anybody can remember, but it's actually, I, I forgot the name, but I would also not mind seeing a very obscure random character like uh, the main character from Toball or Toball 2. Mm, I remember in that either, fighting game. In either Tekken or Virtua Fighter, or you know what? Hell, since everyone's everyone's here, why not Smash as well? Like why you know, not? you can, you could literally fit that any of those Toball characters, including the main character, anywhere. So that would that would be another thing I would like. <laughs> and those like are that. those are my very random obscure choices. Um, there's one more for Soul Calibur. Um, like I said, it's very obscure, but. Uh, Mikoto from Samurai Showdown, Warriors Rage. I would love to see her in uh, Soul Calibur. Mm. And wow. That that does it for me. <laughs> who who would her rival be though? She's so she's she's probably uh, Se uh, Setsuka. See, I was gonna say probably Setsuka. It, it would probably be her, or she'd probably just be chasing after Hao Maru, even though it's the young Hao Maru instead of the older one, but she might be trying to chase after him in the game as well. Uh, those are the only two fitting I could, like, really think of offhand. Mm. Okay, wow. Okay, that's interesting. I would have thought, you know, maybe Tobu. Well, when I think of Tobu, I think of, because they did a lot of claymation, I think, in Tobu, if I'm right. But um, I would see like a crossover between Tobu and um, Clay Fighter. Mm, good old Clay Fighter. Mm -hmm. I'll jump in. Um, so I have two, just two right now. And the two that I have have a lot of logic to them, a lot of reason, okay, <laughs> a lot of purpose. So number one would be the Shredder in Mortal Kombat. We need it. We need oh, it. Because wow. you got the turtles. You already got the turtles. And then you see the shredder walk out. And the shredder's perfect because he has all those like menacing like pieces on him. And he could do all sorts of cutting them up things. He could call in like foot soldiers. He could he could he could have Crane jump out through a portal in the Technodrome. You know, they do come on. We can get crazy. <laughs> The Shredder in Mortal Kombat would be so pr crazy. And then they should have a DLC that's the 80s cartoon version with James Avery as the voice. That would make it, <laughs> I'll get you next time, Turtles. It, it should be just like that. It'd be, it'd be perfect. RIP James Avery, Uncle Phil, you know? So that would be my number one is Shredder and Ninja Turtles. It only makes sense. You already brought the four Turtles in. You got to have somebody who's against them. You bring the Shredder in. You bring Krang in. He could have an assist or a move with Bebop and Rocksteady jump. I mean, there's so many things he could do with that. The X-Ray move could be Bebop and Rocksteady. Right. I mean, was, um, right? I mean, so uh, next, and this one, I you know, I, I this one was kind of hard for me to choose. You know what I'm saying? But, and, and now... I'm I'm kind of on the fence. Do I even want to mention it? You know what I'm saying? But you know, actually, I'm just gonna leave it at at Shredder. I think Shredder's that that's that one. That one was the one. Shredder nice in, in one. Mortal Kombat because that's he just fits one. there because he's so. I mean, we've never seen Shredder super violent yet. We haven't seen Shredder get the let loose in blood and stuff like that. We only see robots <laughs> get destroyed. You know, you see him kick them or hit them. You never see him like stripping or you know, red or ripping flesh and stuff like that. So that's where we get to see Shredder in his light Mortal Kombat. Back to you, Tron. Hey, can I get screen share or am I? You're on. Share? You're on. Okay. So you've probably already been seeing who, who my choice was. And I think this is a guy who doesn't get enough recognition. And he's pretty much, I think, one of the first official ninjas of video games. And we've seen him in 1987's Shinobi that came out in the arcade and later on on the Sega Master System. But other than like a couple of homages in games like Sega All-Star Racing, you don't get to see this guy too much. And um, I think he would be cool in anything like a smash brothers or maybe like a virtual fighter or tekken or mm. something like that mm -hmm. uh, or just give him some more of his own games because i think other than like a couple of the ps2 ps3 releases we haven't really seen anything of joe musashi since so mm -hmm. um yeah this guy he goes back to the 
8-bit era on the master system and he he like pretty much threw shurikens across the screen like like a real ninja like you you would think like it would be like a pretty slow projectile because it's a video game but those things are pretty much traveling the same speed as those bullets coming out of that guy's gun and he's pretty much in essence showing it what it is to be a ninja in the 80s when ninjas were like kind of the thing and everyone wanted to know more and more about ninjas some people went as far <laughs> as like traveling to japan and going to ninja school and stuff but yeah. in video form this guy originated a lot of the tropes that we know of as ninjas like being able to like uh disappear and ninja Walk magic and shurikens and uh melee like sword play and all that kind of stuff um yeah. and i want to i want to I want to pick someone else as someone I think should be in more games other than the games he's in is this guy right here. Oh, he's probably known as the most kick-ass dude of the last 10 years. And he's pretty much like the essence of a guy that's dealing with struggle of his mind between being a bad guy and a good guy since he's uh, considered a gangster. In he Japan, looks so real, is, man. Oh, yeah. You can see the pores on this guy's skin right now, how menacing he looks. He's piercing your eyes. He's not playing. You know, if you're some, if you're standing on the other side of this guy and he's looking at you like this, it's, it's not good. <laughs> uh, I actually just got his action figure in, uh, in order, too, so I'll, yep. I'll be show that next time. It's very cool. Nice. But I'd like to see this dude. I know he hasn't been in too many, like, I, I would like to see him in, like, Virtual Fighter, or Tekken 7, or like, or give him some kind of other, yes, I would say put him, in, put him in Smash Brothers, who cares? That would be so sick, like, love this guy. I say when you put him in GTA, put a Japanese Yakuza into American gangsterism, <laughs> and see how, it, how, see how it rolls out, like the movie Brother, starring uh, oh, uh, Omar Epps. Uh, I love that movie. <laughs> it's a good movie. <laughs> Creepy movie. Take it away, Cookie. Oh, in your shared wow. screen. In your, in your shared screen, huh? Oh, yeah, you still have your shared screen on. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> I guess the next game for me would technically be, um, I would be interested in seeing a Killer Instinct versus Bloody Roar. Ooh, ready for that. They're set, they're set in the same time frame same um, time continuity universe. And the characters in Bloody Roar all can transform into animals. And Killer Instinct already has several animal-like characters in there. Sure. Sure. Orchid can morph into a tiger yeah. you know, or, or fire cat. You have Riptor, you have Saber Wolf. Saber Wolf! You know? Oh, shit. And so I'm thinking some type of trade between the companies like um, Bloody Roar can definitely use the Killer Instinct combo engine and the yeah. characters from Killer Instinct can, the ones that can't transform into animals should get some type of transformable ability. Right. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know, that way they can share the culture together of both each respective games, you know, mm -hmm. as for, and that's just kind of quick on the whim right there. As for Smash, you know, I really, 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 wanted to see the adventures of Lolo. I wanted to see Lolo. Um, I'm actually pulling up an image right now. Um, I would like to see this character there. Or if not, you know, primarily like Igor the King of Darkness. You know, Igor the King of Darkness was the protagonist of the Lolo game. Um, I'll go into a shared screen right here. There we go. Um, these are a bunch of images right here. But um, as I click on to this one, this one right here, this is Igor, the King of Darkness. That's, I guess, the American, the American image of him. There's, a, there's of course, a better image of him, how he really looks in the Japanese art. Um, let's see here. But yeah, technically, here he is, much better. So either Igor, the King of Darkness right here or Lolo in Smash. You know, the game has, like, over... There's like over it's eight games, over eight games of the Igorland Lolo series. They started on the MSX, then it moved over to Windows, then it were on um, Famicom Disk, which was not released in America, that stayed in Japan. 
and then Famicom, which is regular Nintendo. So it spanned like several generational systems from the 80s into the mid into the early 90s, ended in like 93, 94. Came back in 2000 when Squaresoft did the graphics for Igorland Revival for Windows 2000. So I think um, he's deserving of making an appearance in um, Smash. I'm still waiting for my 64 Ultra. <laughs> oh, well, th th that's not happening, but <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> So those are the games. Those are the games that I think of that mean the most to me in terms of crossover characters. Honestly, I um, just one last thing, real quick. I want to say I'm kind of disappointed because um, even though Gil finally came out in Street Fighter V, I honestly thought a few years back that he might be part of the uh, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite storyline. I I would oh, think that, that his crazy. supers his supers would have looked great in the game. I honestly thought um, he tied in better in that storyline mm. and uh, could work uh, so much better with uh, the Infinity Stones and everything and him mm -hmm. trying to get that power. So I was actually a little bit bummed that he did not make the cut, even though he was supposedly supposed to be in other games or planned on being in other games in the past. But I was really hoping that he maybe had a spot in Infinite. So that was kind of a little bit of a bummer. I want to tell in on that. Uh, that I, I just remembered who my second person was again um, in full because I it was on a, a teetering line. But mm -hmm. who I feel is missing in a game is in Marvel versus Capcom two or three. We need the Punisher. That's the one character that has not made it to a Marvel versus game. That is one of the most lethal characters yeah. that has a gun arsenal, grenades, can fight, can jump around and use ro do People, I remember when people talked about the Punisher, but his name was also synonymous with Bishop. Because people not only wanted Punisher, like they Catholic. also wanted Bishop. Mm. Yes, I agree. But Bishop. Punisher first, though, because Punisher's a hardcore 80s character before they even introduced Bishop to the Marvel Universe. True. That Punisher definitely deserves a He had his own games. He had his as own well as Daredevil. Game. A lot of people say Daredevil. Huh? Mm -hmm. Cobra? He had his own, own beat-em-up Capcom yeah, game. Yeah, platform game, yeah. yeah. Oh, but um, that's not... No, I'm talking fighting, not no, beat-em-up Capcom. I'm just saying that I know. you would think Capcom would have kind of capitalized on yeah, him and put, put him in Marvel or something. Exactly. They already right. had a game of him. They already had licensing and everything. They could have just thrown him in. That yeah, would have been true. Yeah, and he has TV shows and movies. It just makes more sense for the popularity. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Him and Daredevil. Daredevil is another Daredevil, good character. If you add Punisher, you kind of got to add Daredevil like mm. by default. Mm. I'd be fire. And like, I'm kind of mad that it took so long to add Ghost Rider in the, um, into Marvel, into the fighting games. They finally did, but it took so long. It's like, we should have seen, been seen Ghost Rider. Probably There's a lot of other characters that are like hardcore. You say, exactly. There's a lot of hardcore characters from Marvel and Capcom that did not make it in those games. But yeah. that is going to be another, another episode. <laughs> Uh, real real quick with the Marvel, I would have played Marvel versus Capcom 3 like that. I would have played Infinite like that if the one character I truly desired was there. And that's Psylocke. When Psylocke was not there, you know, <laughs> I just didn't know. I, Kitty, I was lost. That's weird. I was lost. I didn't know what to do with myself because my, my team was supposed to be Morrigan, Shinko, and Psylocke. Right. That's yeah. what I wanted. And she was sadly not there in both of the Infinite or Marvel's Capcom 3. So I was like, And but. you know, she was so popular in 2. It's like, why didn't you put her in 3? Well, right. she, was, she was the go-to lady from the start with Children of the Atom. Of course, she shared the stage, she shared the stage with Spiral and Storm. But mm. she was the only lady in War of the Gems. Mm. And then she was missing in MVC one, came back in MVC two, and wasn't in three or infinite. Yep. Wow. But then again, on the same note, I like to see another three D X Men Dimension game though too. Right. She was she was hot in that game. Right. Mm. So. All we got right. like three other subjects to talk about already. <laughs> what we just said alone right now. <laughs> oh, I I I already have topics. 
for episode four. Y'all gonna be excited about this. Um, I'll count down. Next one. So, <laughs> so with that being said, does anyone have any closing comments? Any news they want to share with the with the with the community? I got something real quick before we close out. I'd just like to say new music video, Just Lose It, on YouTube right now. Filmed <laughs> by Forking in Public, Wapiano Media, presented by Strike First Gaming, Rich Kid Academy, by yours truly, Galaxy B. Let's go. All right. Everybody who's watching, go out there and check out Galaxy B's new music video, Just Lose It. And if you don't, you just going to lose it. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> when when right. do we get to do backup vocals? Come on, you got to collaborate here. Hey, you know, I got to hear some demo tapes first, you know? I'm Dr. Dre at this point. <laughs> Dr. Dr. No, no, you're not. Don't say that. Don't say that. You're not in, in the hospital. In, in this group, musically, I'm the Dr. Dre at this point. Okay, that sounds better. Right. Okay. But, yeah. Don't I jinx yourself. An aneurysm. No, and, and God rest his, you know, his recovery. Right? Oh, yes. We're hoping for you. We're praying oh, for yes. you, Dr. Dre. Cool. So. Well, thank you for tuning in to episode three of the Strike First Gaming Show. We look forward to seeing you with the next episode with fresh content and new topic to share with our community. See you later. Bye. Peace.